In the beginning, there was nothing. Somehow, out of this nothing, came everything. Out of this vibrant nothingness, matter, energy, space, time, consciousness, mind, emerged, came out. How is it that something as unconscious as the matter of the brain can ever give rise to something as immaterial as an experience? If you want to see fear in a quantum physicist's eyes, just mention the words, the measurement problem. The measurement problem is this. An atom only appears in a particular place if you measure it. In other words, an atom is spread out all over the place until a conscious observer decides to look at it. So the act of measurement or observation creates the entire universe. Only conscious beings can be observers, then we're intimately hooked in to the very existence of reality. Without us, there would just be this expanding superposition of possibilities with nothing definite ever actually happening. Out of millions and millions of blobs of energy and light, photons and electrons, they make up this uh, imaginary three-dimensional solid world, which doesn't exist at all according to uh, relativity or quantum mechanics. Anytime we attempt to look at particles beyond a certain level, the very act of observation changes things. And in addition, the more you look at individual particles, the more you realize that there is no such thing as one electron. An electron or any elementary particle exists only in relationship to other things, like other particles or, or the universe at large. This means that, that deeply enough, when you de dive down into the nature of matter, everything we know about the, the everyday world dissolves. There are no objects anymore, there are only relationships. There's no locality anymore, there's no time anymore. The more you look at something in detail, in what we think of as solid matter, the less and less solid it begins to look. The only realities we know are the ones our brain manufactures. Our brain receives millions of signals every minute, and we organize them into holograms, which we project outside ourselves and call reality. Well, if the brain cortex, uh, if it is also a hologram, then it's a three-dimensional hologram. If two-dimensional holograms reconstruct three-dimensional images, then, ergo, it follows that three-dimensional holograms reconstruct four-dimensional images. A hologram is a metaphor. It is how you take n dimensions of information and you bring them down into n minus one dimensions. It's a way of relating the paradoxes that we find in how to make a leap from this concept to that concept. The conceptual pigeonholes we use, words, to, to describe reality are phenomena inside our head. They're not out there. And most of the time, this is a philosophical quibble. When, but when you get down to quantum physics, and this is one of the reasons that Bohm came up with the holographic idea, it, it starts to have real effects. And one of those is it's been discovered that if you take uh, two subatomic particles like electrons, in certain instances, when you do something to one, it will always affect the other, no matter how far apart they are. Well, how can this be? But what this tells us is that once matter is physically joined, even when it becomes separate, the energy is still there that's connecting it. And this is why it's important to me, because if we go back far enough in time, all the particles of matter of this entire universe that are expanding were all meshed together in a single particle about the size of a green pea, is what scientists tell us today, is what the computer models suggest. That if you could go into the universe today and take all the particles of matter and take out all the space in between and bring it together and compress it into the size of a single green pea, it means that you and me and every one of our listeners, we were all once part of that same particle that creates this whole universe today. And even though those particles are now separate and expanding, and, and the studies show that they are, energetically we're all still linked. So an atom and its electron are multiversal objects. And that multiversal object is what the quantum mechanics is describing. Now, that means that the parallel universe aspect of reality, as described by quantum theory, must apply to objects of all sizes. Humans, stars, galaxies, everything. And that's why we call it the parallel universe theory, rather than just parallel electrons theory. <laughs>
Infinities are part of the boundary of your existence. That is, viewed from this perspective, everything can be divided to infinity. If you've ever wondered why nuclear power is a million times more powerful than chemical energy, it's because chemical energy results from the manipulation of atoms in a molecule. Nuclear energy results from the manipulation of nucleons in a nucleus. The super unified scale, a thousand, million, million, million times smaller, is virtually infinite in its dynamism. If you're seeking the infinite, what instruments do you have to seek the infinite? Only sense organs, isn't it? So through your sense organs, if you're seeking the infinite, it is like wanting to go to moon with a bullock cart. Isn't it so? That is the plight of humanity right now. With a limited perception, they're trying to grasp that is which is beyond. So we try to perceive at the ultimate level of reality, and we search for any kind of method. For example, new technology, atomic power, etc. But search as we might, we cannot perceive the ultimate level of reality using these mechanisms. The ultimate level of reality is fundamentally empty we cannot find and not observable here. using these scientific methods. Science is involved in a perceptual enterprise, not, in, not primarily in gaining knowledge, though knowledge appears, but knowledge is a byproduct. And by understanding the thing, you can coherently then our contact with it, as long as it is coherent, it shows that our understanding is correct. You see, we must distinguish between correct appearances and incorrect appearances or illusory. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. Our brains take information in and sometimes give a form. It's not that the picture is out there, it's that we're getting data that we're turning into a picture according to our own belief systems and our own unconscious belief systems as well. We know what is going on is that light comes in through the eyes, hits the back of the retina, triggers electrochemical impulses which travel down nerve fibers to the back of the brain where the brain very cleverly in about a tenth of a second puts it all together and says this is what it looks like out there.